Well, um, when I was younger, you know, there's the question, when did life start? You can say that's what, what life started, you know, it's uh, when I was in, in school, I, I used to, well, when I was a young kid, I used to think that was when, when I was born, right? When I came out of my mom's womb. And then as I went to school and all that, I thought, well, at the moment of conception, you know, that that's when I started. But then you ask yourself, well, did, was there life in the sperm or was there life in the ovum? And the answer is yes. Because if the ovum or the sperm didn't have any life, then conception would not happen. Now, mind you, I'm using 2017 concepts, you know. What we know about science, we know about conception, we know about the cell, something that we didn't know really before that, you know, what we know now. But the thing remains, life, there was life in the sperm, there was life in the ovum, which means mean life didn't start at the moment of conception, life was already there. What happened at that moment of conception? A single point of perception was created, which is this body, this mind. But life was already there. And it didn't start with my mom and my dad. The same life force that animates them is in me. Or you could say the life force that's in me is in them. But my life didn't start with my mom and my dad because the sperm and the ovum that gave them life was already alive too. So you can already use your imagination right there that it didn't start with my mom, nor with my parents, grandparents, and generation, generation, generation. It starts expanding, expanding, expanding because we find that common ancestor. And then you have an apex, and it starts going down, 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 down to a single point. And that, that's just using our imagination, continuing that trend that uh, that question lies. When did life start? Well, there was life in the ovum, there was life in the sperm, which means life started before that. And if you, continue, if you decide to use your imagination to say, well, there's variations in our chromosomes, in our DNA, that somewhere there's mutations, that the mutations that we all have, you know, that makes us different skin, different color, whatever, all of a sudden we can start saying, well, then, then we expand it even more. And it just keeps doing this thing, you know, this, this whole thing. So, could it be the Big Bang, the hand of God? I wasn't there. All I have are stories. But what I do see is that we all have a common ancestor. All of us have a common ancestor. Because somewhere along the line, you know, some, some ancestor took a left, took a right, or went this way, that, that way. But we all came from that point. So from that point of view, the, the force that animates all our bodies comes from the same source. What makes it difficult for us to even begin to imagine that before that is that we live life it, from this single point of perception, from this body and this, and this mind. To, for me to see life from your point of view, the only way to know is to hear you. For one, to hear you say your words and then to imagine what that feels like. Ultimately, I still have to use my imagination to know, to experience life through your eyes. That's why language is there. Language allows me to hear it from your point of view. You know, and if you're a wonderful wordsmith, you, you, you'll create a wonderful story that I'm able to engulf and engage your journey, your pains, your struggles. But even if I hear your pains and struggles, that's still one of my projections because I'm trying to find that common ground that allows me to relate with you. But ultimately, it's still my emotions. So the only thing I feel are my emotions. The only thing I experience are my, my feelings, my, my sensations, my being in this body. You can say that's the thing that happened at the moment of conception. I was born and created this single point of perception that is me. But if you allow that question, when did life start and you realize that about the ovum and, and the sperm, and then all of a sudden the imagination just keeps going, 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 going. Then you, then you see life everywhere. You see it as one thing. You just, energy has no form. Yes, this body has a form, but in reality it doesn't. Simply because, well, this body has a form, but the energy that animates it doesn't. Just like our mind doesn't have a form. It's reshaped and shaped by our belief that we take on and let go and take on and let go. We're constantly evolving. So when we start seeing that communion, not just with 
our fellow human beings, we start seeing that communion with every single species here in the planet. Because we humans, we've only been a bl not even a blink of an eye here. You know, we, it, uh, this, uh, this planet is incredibly old and a lot of life happened before that. How did it morph? How did it have that? We'll find out. You know, we can use our imagination. We can listen to the scientists. We can listen to their point of view, what they find. But right now, the only thing we know is what we have in front of us. So we are part of this planet. We are an organism that lives in this planet. And you can almost say that the breath of the fauna gives life to the flora and the breath of the flora gives life to the fauna. We are connected by the breath. The breath that I take right now that allows me to live comes from a living organism that is a plant, a flower, a, a tree, grass. Those organisms give me the air that allows me to breathe. And when I exhale, my breath that I exhale nurtures every one of those single, those, every single one of those plants, every single one of those trees and leaves and flowers. So we are connected by the breath of one another, the flora and the fauna. So you can say that we are a symbiotic being. So right then and there, you, we are connected, even if we're not aware of it, our breath is connected. And from that point of view, then somewhere along the line, that, that, that binary system was, had an original point. Whether it is it, what is it? Well, we'll let so, a, a physicist or a science or or someone in spirituality tell us that. But what we can see right now in front of us is that clearly we have a communion, if we're willing to see it, that we have a communion with the environment and we have a communion with every single human being that it is. The only thing that separates us is a point of view.